Hollywood, art museums, historical costumes, world events. Today, these are the sources from which comes inspiration for the fashion designer. Johnny, be careful, you'll tear my pattern. How did you get in here anyway? Just open the door. Look, I've got some new records. Let's try them. But first, I have to decide on the material for my new dress. Oh, just like a girl. Always thinking about new clothes. Well, you don't have to have a new dress. You always look good. Know-how look. What do you mean, that know-how look? Well, it's what we fellas like a girl to have. And you have it, plus. It's sort of like... Oh, look out of the window there, quick. Now, there's just the opposite of what I mean by the know-how look. Once, I looked like that myself. Grimy shoes, my slip showing, a sweater big enough for Babe Ruth, and all those crazy gadgets. And the way I walked, scuffing along the pavement, head down, bleeding with my chin. My skin was horrible, too. Not enough milk and green vegetables. Not enough outdoor exercise, either. I'm glad I took the home economics course. We learned so much more than just how to make clothes. Good grooming, how to take care of our skin and hair, how to carry ourselves so our clothes look really smart on us. All those things that make Johnny say I have the know-how look. See what I mean? Now take you, your figure's cute. And... My figure? That's all done with a book. You mean your grandmother made you walk with a book on your head to make you stand up straight? Maybe I'd been better if she had. Look, here's me. <laughs> oh, no. You don't look that way. Here, give me the pencil. You look like this. An illusion, Johnny. Done with this book. See? Area B looks larger than Area A, but they're the same size. To add pounds, use shoulder accents, broad contrasting belts, full sleeves, do you understand that? Oh, sure. As a future architect, I use those same principles myself. Yeah, I see how girls could use them to change their figures. Which of these colors would you like for my new dress? Oh, but how about light blue? I like blue. Well, let's see what my book says. Here I am. My eyes are hazel, not pure blue. But it works out the same way. What is your type? What colors make you your most exciting and attractive self? Experiment with actual fabrics. You're right after all. Make it red. That's what I've decided. Everybody can wear some shade of red. Do you make all your own clothes? Sure. Lots of us girls do. But your clothes look so professional. Johnny. Don't you know that the most professional-looking clothes are those made by hand, individually? You don't think that people like little well, movie stars buy their clothes off a rack, do you? Well, no, but, gee, the people that make their clothes are professionals. You're just a high school girl. Gee, maybe you ought to be a designer yourself. Well, silly, I am a designer for myself. We learn that in our home economics classes, too, besides how to fit and sew like a professional. You sound as if dressmaking is an easy thing. It is. I just let my pattern tell me what to do, and it comes out all right. That's right, Betty. Let the pattern tell you. Yes, we're your pattern. Tissue paper stuff. But in this facile frame, there is enough of glamour, charm, enchantment, and allure to set young hearts afire. And we can cure that curve or bulge you'd like to lose if you think carefully before you choose. You sound like a magician. Where do you come from? This is our birthplace, where your pattern clothes. Here, ideas from round the world come pouring in, whirling their way into the designer's imagination, cleverly taking form under agile pencils, emerging as the clothes you like best. To be sure you can make them with the utmost simplicity, each design is actually made up in muslin before your pattern is cut, thus pre-tested for you. 
but it is your responsibility to choose the style best for you and the right fabric for that style. You want the best quality you can get for what you can spend. And it should be appropriate, depending on the season or climate. A basic dress like this is right in cotton, wool, or rayon. How much fabric do you buy? How much to get? Alas, alack. To answer that, I have to turn my back. Mark at the top the size that's you. Now down the left, you must pursue the width of good. Then twixt the pair, two lines you draw. And right there, where the two lines meet, your pen retards. So there it is, you find the yards. Clever. Does it always work out right? Oh, yes. The pattern maker figures that very carefully. The pieces of the pattern and the various figure sizes are arranged on tables marked lengthwise in fractions of yards and crosswise in the standard widths of materials. Different arrangements are tried to find the one using the least material. A drawing of this arrangement is included in the instruction sheet of your pattern. Yes, I see how that diagram makes cutting both easy and economical, but pattern, the pictures show two ways to make you. How does a girl know what pieces to use? That's easy. On each pattern piece is printed both its name and the style to which it belongs. Dressmaking starts by pinning the pattern together so it can be tried on to see if adjustment is needed. Well, what are you doing there? Betty needs a full-length mirror for her pattern try-on. There isn't one in her living room, so we gave her one. What happens if the pattern doesn't fit? It will. She checked her measurements and got the correct pattern size. She also got correct sewing equipment. Nine-inch shears, good quality pins and needles, plenty of thread, a slide fastener, and a 60-inch tape measure. Right here is where you use that cutting diagram you saw being made, when you lay the pattern on the material for cutting. Whoop, there's a piece that slipped. Don't worry. See that line mark straight of fabric? You measure from the fabric edge to the top and bottom of that line. When the two measurements agree, the piece is straight. In a printed pattern, pins should be put in in the direction of the cutting line, not across it. And just enough pins to hold the pattern in place. Cutting line? What's that? The heavy line around each piece. Do you cut inside that line? No, no, no. You cut exactly on the line with long, firm slashes. Betty's pattern has V-shaped marks showing what seams are to be joined. She has cut these out onto the material, or she could clip them into the seam allowance. Arrow-shaped lines indicate dark. Other important points are indicated by dots. All of these Betty marks with tailor's tacks, taking a double stitch through pattern and material. She clips the top loops, lifts the pattern off the material, and clips the thread between the fabric layers. The fabric now separates easily, with both pieces clearly marked. She runs a basting thread down the center of her blouse and skirt. Thus, when she fits her dress, she'll know whether the centers hang straight. What is she stitching? She's making stay stitches along curved edges, so they won't pull out of shape. These preliminaries are important. It pays to be very careful about them. Now she bases her darts from the point to the wide end. How does a girl know where to begin? She just follows her instruction sheet, step by step. First, she matches the notches previously cut and pins the pieces together. What's that thing? The seam line printed on the pattern pieces shows how deep to take each seam. To keep the basting even, you use a gauge or a tape measure. Even seams mean better fit. She's ready to baste in the sleeves. Putting in sleeves is simple if you follow the pattern's instructions. 
Using a long stitch on the machine, Betty has already put in two rows of gathers between the notches. One slightly inside the seam line, and one between the seam line and the edge. With the basted dress wrong side out, and the basted sleeve right side out, the sleeve is set in the armhole. Single notches at the front. Matching the double notches at the back. Matching the underarm seams and with sleeve top at shoulder top. Pin, draw up gathers to fit. Fasten the gathering threads. And this. Simple, isn't it? It doesn't sound hard, but I want to see how the dress looks on Betty. So does Betty. But right here she makes any fitting adjustments that may be needed. Maybe I shouldn't criticize, but aren't the shoulders a bit droopy? She's forgotten her shoulder pads. Shoulder pads must be pinned in place for all fittings. Those darts need to be taken in. That's hard to do by yourself. Let's help her. <laughs> oh, after all, a good pattern is one of a girl's best friends. So, we have a right to be there. This will fix it. And after she takes the dress apart and rebase those darts, she can stitch. Must a girl tie herself up in knots to stitch? Betty, straighten up. Remember, correct posture at the machine. What is she stitching? A dart, stopping the wide end and tapering off to nothing at the point. Watch how carefully she fastens the threads. She's a regular boy scout with that knot. I suppose the bastings come out now? Yes, but she clips them before pulling them out. Is she through with her stitching? She's pressing. Only the dart she just stitched. Press as you go is a rule of good sewing. It helps achieve that professional look. See, she has pressed the dart toward the center of the garment. There, she's finishing her stitching. The next step is to hang the hem, and it takes two for that. We must help her again. How many inches from the floor, Betty? I know that. I read in the paper yesterday that skirts are 13 inches from the floor. My home economics teacher says to make skirts the most becoming length. Your teacher is right. Naturally, you don't want your skirt so much shorter or longer than the average that you'll be conspicuous. But an inch or so, one way or the other, won't matter. There. That's done. Now to put in the hems, and easy does it. Hemming stitches must not be pulled tight. And tack in the shoulder pads or put them in with snap fasteners. Is that all there is to making a dress? Except for a final once over with the iron. And <laughs> that's easy, because she's pressed each seam as she stitched it. Do you like it, Johnny? I'll say I do. Want to see some quick change magic? Well, there's a brand new dress. Now, of course, nobody could make it in just a few minutes, as Betty seems to have done, but it could be made in one weekend by anyone who knows the fundamentals of sewing. Try it yourself, and you'll see. Quite a fashion show, aren't I? Betty, I've got it. Why don't you and the other girls put on a fashion show to get money for new equipment for the basketball team? Wonderful, Johnny. The girls will be crazy about it. I'm going to call up my home economics teacher right now and see if she'll help. Your patent catalog is a book of magic, for it transforms all who use it into creative artists. Yes, just as the portrait artist uses the paints and brushes to express his impression of a personality, so you can use fabrics and lines and colors 
to express your own personality. Hello, everyone. Thanks for coming to our little fashion show. You will be glad to know that the basketball team is $112 richer because you came. Now, don't expect anything grand. These clothes are just what we've made in our clothing class this past semester. I hope you'll like them. Wouldn't you like to look this cool on a summer day? White does wonders for your suntan and takes any color accessories. This basic dress goes smartly to sports events, to school, or to the movies with a boyfriend. A bright colored boxy jacket takes care of cool evenings. Now here's a grand idea. Plan a wardrobe that makes two outfits do the work of several. For instance, the three-button jacket of this green wool suit can be combined with the other costume's plaid skirt to make a third ensemble. Or you can team up the green turtleneck blouse with the green suit skirt and you have a fourth smart outfit. Schoolmates. The corduroy jumper and the gabardine sack dress, both with a new angle. The jumper has a swishy circular back contrasting with a prim square bodice. And there's a clipper trick in the sack dress, a belted in shoulder scarf ending in a pocket. Sailor beware, here's the new midi dress. A long torso top over a box pleated skirt. Matt, mix your colors. Make sleeves long or short. Both of these dresses are of wool jersey. Betty tells me that blouses and skirts rate A plus with schoolgirls. Here's a combination in jersey and striped wool, good for fall or spring. The deep armhole is not only smart, it's comfortable too. A wide belt gives the new look of small waistline and rounded hips. Striped cotton shines at the beach, the pool, or even in the garden. This dirndl skirt wraps around in buttons. When you want to complete your suntan, take it off. Throw it over your shoulders too, like a shawl when you've had enough sun on your back. Can't you see this outfit pedaling along on a bicycle, going to a picnic? Looking very gay, in fact, at any of summer's fun spots. It's new fashion to look old-fashioned. Candied pink plaid taffeta rustles its quaint bustle and flirts a lace dust ruffle. And so Betty's fashion show ends. But everywhere, sewing machines are humming, preparing for the fashion shows girls put on every day when they step out in the clothes they've made for themselves. Happy sewing to you all.